Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Something cool for you to check out today, the latest guitar and bass processor from Boss. Let's get started. <laughs> Today we're looking at the GX100, the latest guitar and bass multi-effects processor from Boss. Now this is a pretty incredible unit. It's the first Boss multi-effects processor to feature a full color touch screen, which makes for very easy and very cool editing flow. We've got a ton of different sounds on board, different amplifiers, different effects, up to 15 effects in a chain, and you can have those in any order. It's very easy to swap things around. We're going to take a look at all that, how you edit sounds, some of the features of this box, but let's start out by checking out some of the sounds.
So as you can hear, we've got a ton of sonic possibilities with the GX100. As I mentioned, 23 different preamp or amplifier models in here. 130 different effects that cover pretty much every category and every type you could possibly want. We've got deep editing. You can have up to 15 effects in a chain, and it's a non-fixed chain, meaning that we can move things around, we can put them in any order that you want. Super flexible. It's very easy to get around on, as we'll see when we look through some of the menus and the touch screen. But we've also got a lot of control right here on the front panel. You have instant access to four parameters with the knobs under the touch screen. We've got eight foot switches, and those can be assigned to pretty much any function you want. You can use them to change presets like we're doing here. You can use them for turning different effects in a chain on and off, or you could use them for other functions, tap tempo, whatever you might want to use those for, you can freely assign all of those. We've also got the treadle here for volume and Y effects or expression pedal effects. And on the back panel, we've got all the connectivity you need to integrate it into your rig. You could, of course, run it direct into the PA system or into your DAW. Like here, we're running straight into our cameras, basically, and recording this. But we've got a mono in for the guitar, stereo out to either feed into your PA system, your recorder, or into amplifiers. And then we've got a loop here, an insert loop. And this allows you to either bring an external effect into the GX100 signal path, or it means you can use this with the four cable method with your existing amplifier. We've got a headphone jack for silent practicing. And we've also got USB, and in this case, I've got the optional Bluetooth controller installed as well. We'll take a look at how that works with a smart device in a little bit. Rounding things out, we have two control jacks. One is for controlling your amplifier, so it basically serves the function of turning foot switch functions on and off on your amp. So you could use the GX100, for example, in the presets to toggle the channels inside your amplifier. You might have one preset that uses a clean channel, another preset that uses the dirty channel. And we've got an expression control input on this as well. That could be either an additional two foot switches, or it could be another expression pedal for controlling a parameter. And again, all that is freely assignable inside the GX100. And if there's not enough going on inside the GX100, you can also load your own impulse responses in. And by the way, this AIRD on the front panel stands for Augmented Impulse Response Dynamics. And it's a proprietary technology from Boss that makes the impulse responses seem even more realistic. The touch is better. They're more touch sensitive and they're more dynamic. It makes them feel more like like you're playing a real amplifier. For audio quality, we have internal 32-bit floating point math going on with all the effects and the processing, extremely high quality processing capabilities here. And we've got 24-bit 48 kilohertz audio in and out on the converters. So let's take a little closer look at how you get around on the GX100 and also how you create and edit presets. So a lot of it centers here around the four inch full color touch screen that we have available here. We have a couple different modes. What we're looking at here is basically preset number and name mode. So we've got preset number, we can page over to show the, uh, the name in a larger font there. If we scroll over one more page, we get to what's called control mode. And this basically shows you what's happening with the controls on the front panel. So we've got bank up, bank down here as we move through that. And we can also see our presets. We're on number one now. We can switch to number two, number three. C2 is set for tuner or manual mode. We'll look at manual mode in a little bit, but tuner, just hit that and the onboard tuner becomes instantly active. You'll notice the sound also mutes when you do that, so you can tune silently. You're not going to annoy anybody with your tuning on stage. Press again to return to normal operation. Uh, we can see that we've got our treadle assigned to foot volume and wah. So if we listen to that. So that's doing that for us. And C1 is controlling the looper module. So we can dub, we can play, dub, play. At the bottom of the screen, we can see what we're controlling with each of the four control knobs here. So amp gain, amp bass, amp treble, and so on. If we scroll over one more page, we can see the effects chain that we're using. So we page over, and now we can see our chain of effects. Wah, overdrive, amp, noise suppressor, foot volume, flanger, space echo, and loop. And so these are the effects that are in our chain in this case. Now, if we change presets by either stepping on a foot switch or by turning the select knob, we'll see the signal path or the chain, the effects chain, change as well. So in this case, now we've got reverb, we've got tremolo, we've got uh, a different overdrive there. Scroll one more, different overdrive, we've got a chorus, back to the space echo, and so on. So as we move through different presets, we can see all the different chains that are being used.
So I've jumped us back to the first preset here, which is GX dual drive. And you can see in this signal path, there's something interesting here. We have the divider here, which splits this so that we can use two amplifiers and get a parallel chain. So you can see the chains can be very versatile and you have a lot of capability for routing things exactly the way that you want them. Now, none of this is fixed. So if we click the effects button here, or if we hit effects up here, we can now access more effects by clicking effects palette and now we can see all the available effects that we can use and we can scroll through that very long list. You can see that they're color coded so you know exactly what type it is. So say we want to add a vibrato effect here. We can touch on that and hold it and now we can drag it exactly where we want it in the signal path. It'll insert in there and now we can see our parameters are engaged here. Now when the colors are the same it means that the effect is on. When it's not, it means the effect is off. So the effect is off, the effect is on. The delay is off, and now if we touch that, the delay is on. And you can see that our effects parameters here change to match whatever effect we have selected. And we can adjust those different things. And we can also page through if there are more parameters than are being displayed on the screen. That's how simple it is to create an effects chain or to modify an effects chain. Just grab an effect and drag it around where you want it. And we can move this very easily as well. So if we select this, we could move it here in front of the noise suppressor. Super easy to get around on, super easy to create the effects chains that you want. Once you have your effects chain created, your sound all lined up, you can have some effects on and off and you can actually assign those to the foot switches so you can turn those on and off in real time as you're playing. So this allows you to have a large effects chain set up and say you're only using an overdrive during the solo. You could have that turned off but now engage that by hitting a foot switch. And we do that by going into manual mode. So if we press and hold here, we'll jump to manual mode and now at this point we can use the different foot switches to turn things on and off. You can see I'm turning the flanger on and off by stepping on foot switch 3. We can go deeper with the editing as well. If we hit this button we can go to knob view and knob view gives us a very easy way to see exactly where the settings are at. So here we're adjusting rate, depth, rise time, effects level. If we hit page we'll jump to the second level and now we're on off and our beat per minute can be adjusted. So that's a little different way to look at what's going on with the different effects. We can turn them on and off as well so we can engage and bypass, hit the double arrow to jump back. When you're finished you want to save your preset, just hit the right button. And now you can write that to a particular memory location where you want, you can name it and so on. To return to the main menus, just hit exit, you'll jump back, we can move back over to the uh, number display or wherever you want to be while you're playing. Now again we're in manual mode here now so we can turn individual effects on and off. If we press and hold again, we'll go back to preset mode and now we're changing presets when we step on the buttons. We have a ton of functionality beyond this. That's how you create sounds, that's how you edit sounds and how you set everything up. It's very intuitive, very easy to use. But we can also hit control expression and this allows us to assign what's happening inside the GX100. So for example under control function this is where you'd set up what's happening with the different foot switches. So the down foot switch for example in this case is banking down. You can see that here but we could change the function of that to decrement the memory by one or increment the memory by one. You could do tap tempo using that switch, you could assign it to turn tuner on and off, you could also use it to switch between memory and manual mode and so on. So you can very easily assign what's happening with each of the foot switches. If we exit back out we can also assign settings and this is where we assign the different parameter controls here. Exit back out, knob settings, again we're assigning our knobs here to different parameters. You can assign those to whatever you like, to the preamp, to any of the effects in the chain, exit out. We also have our MIDI settings here. So the MIDI channel, program change messages and so on. So these are our control and expression settings. If we hit menu this gives us more system type settings. So we've got control mode, memory or manual, which we've already talked about. We've got hardware settings. This is where we set up the amp control for changing channels on your amp using that amp control output jack. So you can assign that here. And we've got a variety of other settings here as well, pedal calibration, LCD brightness, so on. We can actually lock the screen 
a page down, we can lock the screen, we can lock the output level and so on so that things don't accidentally get changed when you're using this on stage. That's a very handy feature. And we also have control over the Bluetooth system here. Now to have Bluetooth, you have to install this optional adapter. It just plugs right in, very simple. But that allows you to control what's happening here to run an editor librarian so that you can uh, edit your presets on a smart device. You can access Tone Central from Boss and get more presets and things. We'll take a little closer look at that later. But this is where you access those Bluetooth settings. Back on the main menu page, we can access tuner settings, we can access MIDI settings, USB settings. The USB jack can actually be used to route audio in and out, so you could use this as an audio interface with your DAW, for example, among other things. We've got information about the system, we've got factory reset here as well. Now if we exit back out, an important menu is the in-out settings, and there's something really cool here that I've never seen on a device like this, and that's input settings. So if we click on that, we have 10 different input settings that are available to us, and basically that means that you can match the input to whatever guitar you're playing. So I'm playing a Les Paul here, so I can set the input sensitivity to match this device. Number two, I might plug in a, uh, or number three, I might plug in a Stratocaster and match the input to the single coils in that guitar. And then maybe I plug in an active guitar with really hot pickups. I can set up the input sensitivity for that so that I'm getting the right response out of my presets in the GX100, no matter what I'm playing. And we can have 10 of those per preset. So we can have 10 different instruments set up here, and whatever instrument you happen to be playing at the time, you can call that up per preset, and everything works perfectly. We can also do output select, and this basically sets up the stereo outputs for whatever you're going to be feeding. In my case, we're again feeding into a recorder or the cameras, and so things are set up to feed the line output. But we could match it to a JC120's return if you want. Uh, we could match it to a katana if that's what we're playing through, a tube combo tube stack, or if you're a bass player, you can match it to a bass amp with a tweeter or a bass amp without a tweeter. So again, you can match the response of the unit and the tonality of the unit to whatever destination you're sending it to. We've got a global EQ. This is very handy for moving among venues where one venue things might be too bassy, so you need to quickly turn the bass down on everything. You can do that with a global EQ, so it's a very easy way to globally set up the EQ curve to match your venue. And finally, we can match the output level using this setting to either minus 10 dBU or plus 4 dBV. So if you're feeding into a professional device with plus 4 levels, you can select that here. Or if you're feeding into a minus 10 device, select that here. So all this adds up to a ton of versatility and a ton of adaptability to make the GX100 work in any environment you're working in, whether you're practicing at home, whether you're using it with an amplifier, whether you're using it direct into a recorder, whether you're using it on stage direct into a PA system or through an FRFR speaker system, whatever you're doing, you can easily match the GX100 to both that destination as well as whatever you're using to feed guitar signal into it. Whatever guitar you're playing can be matched up as well. So before we wrap things up here, I want to show you one more thing, and that's the deep editing that you can do using a smart device. So I've got my iPad Pro here, and I've got the uh, GX100 app running on it, and this allows me access to everything that's basically inside the GX100. So you can see I've got all the effects here, I can scroll among those, we can choose new effects, I can drag them down and add them into the signal path. We can edit the settings, we can turn things on and off. We can go to knob view, adjust the settings. We also have librarian functions. We can access Boss's Tone Central to download more presets and sounds. We can see the tuner from here. Pretty much anything you can do from the front panel, you can also do remotely using Bluetooth. Now to use the app with a smart device, you do have to have the optional Bluetooth expander. And I've got that module installed here in this GX100, very simple installation. It just slots in place and then you tighten up one screw and you're good to go. It pairs up instantly with your smart device, and basically at that point, you have a virtual representation of everything in the GX100 right on your smart device. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Boss GX100. They've really thought of everything you can do to make this usable for a guitar player or a bass player. There are tons of bass sounds in here as well. So whether you want to take this on stage, use this in the studio, use it for rehearsal, use it for practicing at home, there are features that are going to make you happy with the GX100. And remember, we've got fantastic audio quality. The algorithms are taken from the flagship GT1000. So great sounds on board and so much versatility. It's a really fun box to play through. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.